eye and other coordination of the motor skills, it becomes a very, very different task altogether. And the skills, therefore, needs to be very different. Now, I am not going to the details of apparel industry, but I want to say that they are also looking at more flexible, well-skilled, trained, versatile, knowledgeable about modern production means, because 40 to 50% 50, 50 of Bangladesh machines have already become underbit trimmers. The, Sri Lanka has become 70, 80% underbit trimmers. India has just about 20, 30%. And we had offtake of only 5% of the 85,000 crore invested in the textile lapel industry in the last 10 years. 99 to 2009, if you take out of 85,000 crore, the apparel industry used only 5% of it for improving the technology. So where is the skill, where is the technology, and why are you complaining that other people are able to supply cheaper you know, clothes to the world? And we, have, we are just being left out as a country which has the largest textile traditions, but not able to compete any more effectively. Uh, so the issues are changing, and the technological advancement is calling for, uh, you know, massive transformation. And therefore, you know, the ATDC, which also I had, uh, you know, I, along with the, my other responsibilities, is trying to revamp this entire process of educational framework. And we had very good news by which, uh, which retained me in Delhi yesterday, because the Honorable Minister has announced 229 crore outlay for the skill development plan for textile sector. And ATDC would specifically get about 100 crores to revamp the entire sector in the next two years, we will be training about 60,000 people. So obviously we have large challenge before us and we have a Pan-India network and we believe a large amount of digital and uh, you know, other kind of e-learning platforms need to be brought in for skill development in the country. We need to create characters which will communicate to people like this, uh, uh, what you see, this, uh, you know, advocating why a particular sector is good. We required also you know, the kind of uh, support through uh, inter intranet and internet kind of uh, situations. Entrepreneurship, it's a big area which uh, we want to really tap. Academy of Trainers, we will require massive number of trainers. Yesterday, today and yesterday, we are conducting tests for faculty competency tests across ATDCs. 210 people are writing the test. We are testing all the skills to ensure that we have right kind of trainers to really take up the challenges of training, which I just mentioned. And this academy is specifically going to set up four more academies, including in, uh, in Chennai, in uh, Chindwada, and in, uh, in Calcutta, in somewhere you know, close to Calcutta. We will be setting up a few more academies to train the trainers, because that becomes a very big issue. We are very delighted that we are part of this community college initiative, because U.S. has made very, very good use of community college at a period in time, from 1992 to 2007, Till ICNU took up, if you really recall, there was really no progress in the community college initiative. We have now already rolled out 25 community colleges, and the results have been fascinating. People who have, we are really lo not looking at any proper accreditation are today coming forward and joining the courses by which they know there is a certificate, there is a diploma, there is an associate degree which they can then stream into the mainline education. I believe this is something which we would like to uh, really ramp up and take care uh, uh, take it forward. We are launching across the country what is called SMART, Skills for Manufacturing of Apparel through Research and Training. There will be almost 102 ATDC SMART centers which will be set up in the next two years. Some of it attached to the current ones in a hub and spoke model, which I will show you. Like each hub will have about five or seven spokes which are attached to it. And there will be also skill camps attached to the kind of uh, skill uh, centers which we are setting up. And these together uh, will go to the interior parts of India to take people and then link up to the clusters of uh, manufacturing activity. There are some 40 clusters of textile parks and clusters which government have set up. Seven or eight of them are mega clusters. And each one has been provided with a modern training facility, but nobody has been really uh, using that. Now, we will be taking over all these modern training facilities to take up this uh, massive employment activity. The training cycle has to be completed. There's no point in training somebody and saying that you then uh, do not get an employment. So there the, the fill up the gap is how do you connect this guy or girl who has been trained on something, but how do you make sure that the person gets an employment within, let's say, 20 to 30 kilometers. In 4,800 to 5,000 rupees, with a skill training of uh, three months, you cannot really go beyond 20 or 30 kilometers cluster. If you want to go beyond that, you should get about eight to 9,000 or 10,000 rupees. That means you require an additional training which has to be given to them. That is the area which we need to really understand uh, how to make this, uh, take this forward. The last part of this, I want to look at how the future of the skill is going to be uh, looked at. Earlier in our nukad, in our villages, 
we had a shorthand training, we had this training, we had that training. Today, because of changing landscape and geography, people are not able to understand where do I get this account, get this information? How do I get to uh, know something, some skills which I can really lo look at? 81% of the skills on which you can get an entry level in life is at this skill level one. And this has been uh, widely publicized in a recent article also in Financial Express. And this is the target of skill, skill training, which can then move on in a layered manner. We believe, therefore, the two, three T's, train, target, train, and transform, is the key issue. The individual, the society, and the quality of life. And once you are able to do this kind of a transformation through skill approach, then we begin to see the society changing. And that is where we are headed. We have suggested to the Urban uh, Housing and Poverty Alleviation Ministry, Kiran Dingra, IAS, and recently the team, I made a presentation suggesting that we create new skill hearts and skill marts and skill malls, which will be set up with the help of the ministry so that multiple skills and life skills and domain skills, including micro enterprise management, is available in that kind of centers. So it becomes a kind of one stop shop for a large number of skills, and many people who are Really, India has become a 55% service economy. Then there are sectors in the manufacturing, and then there is agriculture. Agriculture, industrial, service. In these sectors, what are the skills coming up? And what is the skill mapping required for the next 10 to 20 years? And create the skill heart, skill mart, skill mall kind of uh, a, a system by which people are able to link up to different organizations which are giving them the skills, but not necessarily going uh, individually going to all these places. So the ministry was very delighted with this approach. And the Urban Skills Innovation Center is part of the scheme which the ministry has conceived, and we are going to work with them to set up these kind of urban skill innovation centers. I believe this is the next frontier uh, by which we, we go beyond just uh, one sectoral approach, but to create the access to people to improve their uh, quality of life and quality of skills. Now, I believe this is uh, need to be in harmony with uh, all what we do, and uh, India has a great challenge on this. And I would like the other speakers to focus on how we can look at uh, some solutions. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Now I go from...